everyone. Happy Wednesday. We're happy to have you joining us once again on our Be Relentless webinars. We're into our third week now and we're starting to talk about the business of real estate again. We've had great input from various people about how to keep your mindset strong and we had a great presentation yesterday that I know many of you got a lot out of from David Black from the Canadian Franchise Association answering some of those questions about government programs available to you. Today, as I mentioned, we are going back to the business of real estate and our guest is someone familiar to many Century 21ers. Doug Thompson is here with us. Doug, hello. You are here to talk to us today about listing presentations. I am, Lee. Thank you very, very much for having us today. So where do we even start in a time like this? Because this is not the showing up at somebody's house and giving your traditional listing presentation. Well, that's 110%. You know, in today's market, what we need to do is we need to have something that we can actually uh, stream and do live uh, on our computers through all the platforms that give us that availability, of course, um, whether it be Zoom or, you know, um, Skype or whichever one you personally use. But you want to make sure and use a platform that, of course, gives you the ability to share the screen so that you're seeing what you're delivering as you go through. So um, we're going to go through our presentation today that uh, uh, jointly between myself and Century 21 have built to be able to uh, handle that situation perfectly. Excellent. Well, I'll hand it off to you then. Okay. Well, let's get started. Okay, well, thank you very much, uh, everybody, for giving me the opportunity to be here as part of our uh, Century 21 family again. And, uh, you know, I started in uh, Century 21 in 1987 and have uh, been part of the family ever since and sincerely hope that uh, that never stops. Uh, being part of the Century 21 family has been uh, a huge part of my uh, life and uh, my personal life and my business life. I have uh, many of my best friends in the world have come from the Century 21 system and are still that way today. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to have us look back though, as far as real estate as a whole, and uh, see where we were many years ago to just bring us quickly forward to where we're at today. And some of the challenges and stuff that have taken place in the years gone past to where we sit today and how we have adapted and worked together to pull forward to become um, strong real estate uh, agents that we are today. So the one thing that I like to look at today or talk about is if you look back into uh, as far as those of us that are old enough to remember the 1979-1980 uh, time, whereas the uh, real estate industry changed drastically due to interest rates. All of a sudden our interest rates were 18, 19, 20, 21%. And it changed the way everything got done in, in it, uh, the real estate industry really quickly. Now in saying that, what happened? There was still a lot of houses that got sold. There was still a lot of business that got done. And the strong, trained, professional agents actually made more money uh, then at, when there was a tough time than there was before the tough time. And so we'll reflect on that as we move forward into the years as we get to today. If we move forward now to, uh, to 1991, and the stock market crash, you know, uh, in 1989, I should say, everybody was saying uh, in 1987, when I started in the business, the interest rates were 13%. Uh, and everybody was saying then, if we could only get to 10%, how things could change in the real estate business and how we could do so much better. And then sure enough, in 1989, uh, interest rates started to change. And then in 1991, boom, under 10%. So everybody's like, yay, we're gonna win. But then the stock market crash of 1990 and 1991 took place and into the uh, basically toilet we went again as far as the market goes and how things changed at that point in time for, for all those that were active and strong real estate agents. Then, of course, we go to Y2K, or we go to Y2K in 2000 and then 9-11 and 2008 and so on. And now here we are today. But I want to reflect back to 1991 just for a short minute to, because... The idea behind it is, is to sort of drive home a point and the power of what we can do today to uh, make us all be stronger as a team, make us all come together as real estate agents. And the point that I make is in uh, exactly at that time in 1991, when the, uh, when the market was down and things were not going very well and the economy was not picking up, um, our office... Uh, took the training program at that time as far as sweat hogs and the flood opening program one more time. And there was five of us that took that program at the same time. 
And what we did is we came together as a group. We came together as a team. And we said at that point in time that our market share in our little community of Cameras Alberta was only 14%. And we said that even though we're in a downtime, we're going to take everything that we're going to learn in this program and we're going to push hard to be able to actually change our direction and change our destiny to where we're at today. No matter what's going on, my mentor Floyd Wickman taught us a very good important uh, saying that says this, we can't always control the economy, but we can always control our economy. And we took that to heart and we dove in and we decided that we're going to come together as a team and we're going to work now and push harder now than we ever did to see what we can do to be better as real estate agents today and how to sharpen our acts and get more skill and be able to be uh, prepared. So when this thing changes, we're going to be the hot market ticket to be able to go out there and get more listings quicker and be able to deal with more buyers quicker because of the fact that we are more skilled. So we did that and our market share went from 14% to 18 months later, we had a 34% market share in our community. We went from being bottom of the ladder as far as market share goes to the top of the ladder as far as market share goes. And I reflect on that story for only one reason today, gang, is that at the end of the day, I believe very strongly that we could do the same right now. When it comes to business, you know, there's a time to do business and there's time not to. And I respect strongly right now, everybody doing what you should be doing is reaching out and helping your, uh, helping your sphere of influence and the people in your database to any way you possibly can. But there's still people that want to sell and there's still people that want to buy. And so we need to be the ones that are ready to do that business when that business is available to us today. So therefore we have to sharpen our ax today. And if there was anything I would be recommending today, if I still own my office, because essentially I'm a um, owner as I did for many years, I'd be calling everybody together regularly and saying, gang, let's lean on each other now. Let's help each other. Let's sharpen our ax. Let's try to do, make our skills be stronger so that we are the ones now today that can handle all the objections, hesitations, or stalls that are gonna take place out there in the industry um, today that are different than they were uh, two months ago or six months ago. So can we actually make ourselves be that team that is ready to pull forward in your individual community and in, in your individual small town or big city? Are you able to pull together and actually make that happen? Because if you do do that, I promise beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can rock the world of real estate again today and just do really, really well together as a team. We all remember that we're stronger as a team than we are as an individual. But first we have to do a couple of things is we have to uh, make sure that our skills are, are sharp and we're ready to move forward and actually uh, do well in the business today as it's presented to us. So what I'd like to do today is I'd like to talk to you a little bit about um, the, the number one um, obstacle or challenge that people are having, I believe today, is to be able to um, learn how to uh, get more listings in this atmosphere, get more listings in this type of a um, um, market. And to do that, I know for a fact that what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into now and actually demonstrate to you now our uh, web-based listing presentation that's gonna help you to be able to do presentations online, help you to be more effective and efficient than maybe you are today. And it's not gonna take you hours and hours and hours to be able to build or control this presentation and make it happen for you. So the goal today is to be able to uh, take you step-by-step -step through the uh, challenges. There's a few steps that we need to go through as far as the, uh, the success or the struggles that are out there. Number one is we have to look at, does this presentation gonna take you lots of time to build? No, I know that some of you have been building a presentation for a long time already and working on it and working on it and working on it and you still don't have it done. And I understand that, that's why I built this presentation in the first place is that was a challenge that many realtors were having. The second one would be to learn how to actually go ahead and uh, uh, present a presentation step by step all the way through to keep yourself in control and to make yourself feel as comfortable and confident as that you can possibly be because now we can do almost exactly the same presentation as we would if we were sitting at the customer's kitchen table because we still have all the same abilities. We still have, uh, when you look at all of our key emotions, the only thing we can't do is reach out and touch the customer, but we can do everything else that we need to do to interact with these people and be able to make them feel comfortable and confident in our skills. So we're gonna need to know how to do that. So we're gonna work a little bit on that today. 
And the last thing is we're going to be able to um, uh, deal with and handle any objections, stalls, or hesitations that come our way. There's nothing more exciting in the real estate business to be able to uh, find that time when you can finally walk into somebody's house if we ever get back to that or be sitting today the way we're going to do it online today and feel comfortable and confident that you can handle any situation that comes up. You can handle any hesitation they throw at you, any stall that they throw at you. You're going to be able to take care of that. And we have a library of uh, hot buttons, we call them, to be able to solve all of those problems. No matter what it is, as an example, somebody says they want to wait or somebody says they want to fix it up before they move or they want to you know, buy one before they sell or they want to interview another agent or any of the things that are out there that are challenges or hesitations that we're going to uh, come off with today. Um, you're going to see that uh, my wife Debbie is going to put into the chat a Zoom link that we're going to have, that we're going to have a Zoom call after this Zoom call, uh, right after it, starting at 11 o'clock that we'll be able to go through all, a lot more of these hesitations and the handlers and so on that we can't actually go through all of them today because time is a restriction. And also we'll go through our a special offer that we're gonna make to you today if you decide that you want to invest into uh, our presentations. So let's dive in now and actually get started and sort of go through the actual presentations as they are and have been built for you by myself and by Century 21. We're gonna use one of our friends of the Century 21 system that some of you that were at the presentation in Victoria seen this already, but we're gonna use uh, our friend Larry Jago as uh, our person that's actually doing the presentation. So I'm gonna imitate first say Larry, which I know that's a bit of a challenge, but uh, for those of us that know Larry. But thank you, Larry, for letting me uh, um, work with you today as far as the presentation itself goes. So what we're gonna do first, gang, is we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you exactly how to uh, build the presentation because as you said as i said at the very beginning that was the first hesitation that people have and so therefore we need to know how simple it is to actually be able to build or fix the presentation as a whole so when we do that we would go here to where it says edit as far as the pencil goes and we would go into this particular part right here and you're going to see how easy it is to be able to edit change or um, make this presentation yours so we of course had Larry on the screen. Now if we wanted to change to yourself, all we do is hit our edit button here. You would click onto Larry's picture and you would go get a picture wherever you have them saved on your computer and pop in your picture. And it just pops right in very simple. Um, and there's resizing that shows you how to do it and right size to do it and so on. Now you would also go over here to where you're going into your um, uh, personal information and you're gonna be able to just go ahead and click on there and uh, enter in your personal information as far as obviously your name and company and phone number and so on and so on. And then you're going to go ahead and you're going to hit update of the slide and you're going to just move right into actually uh, now having your presentation ready to go. So that's how simple it is, gang, to be able to edit any portion of the actual presentation that we have here today. Now we can go back to be able to edit more or do more with it if we want to. Um, to edit another slide hypothetically if we wanted to go here and and change this picture as you notice Everything is already done for you by Century 21 We could again change this picture very quickly if we wanted to by just editing that or if we wanted to edit anything here We could do that too. So that's kind of what we're looking at to try to give you an idea of how Simple fast and easy it is to be able to have a presentation and be able to move forward with it to uh, handle the uh, concerns that you have to actually be within this presentation system that we have. One of the reasons that we created this system is to make sure that it's very easy for people to move around inside it because it is a website. It's not actually um, um, a PowerPoint where you go slide by slide all the way through. We are going to go all the way through like that, but at the end of the day, we can move around inside it very quickly. So as an example, if we wanted to jump over here to marketing just for fun, we could jump right over to marketing and be into marketing in two seconds because it has that drop down menu. If we wanted to, and the time comes that we want to handle all those hesitations and stalls that we talked about, we would go over here to this hot button session and section, and here they all are right here for us to be able to solve any of those problems. If somebody wanted to say that they wanted to, you know, talk about uh, comparative shopping, meaning they want to interview another agent, we would just click on here and there you are. You have your comparative shopping uh, analysis that you would go. Now we've got it built so far that uh, the base information is here. 
Century 21 and myself have put the information in on the far left that you can see here today that has um, all of some information as far as the services that we offer. Now, over and above that, that is all editable and you will change that to match your company and your, uh, or your area that you're in. Then we will go to company and then you're gonna compare the next closest company to you, next closest company to you and all the way across to fill in the information as it is there um, as you go through. Notice there's one thing that you'll never change though. When you look down here at the bottom and you say me, you're the most important thing in this presentation at the end of the day, gang, and we know that to be true. And that's what we're looking at today. And the rest, of course, you'll be able to fill in and to go from there. So again, as to make it simple and easy, we're gonna be able to go right back to the very beginning where we started, and we're gonna be able to get going now to actually go through the full presentation step-by-step step, as we said. Now, to be able to present a presentation, there's a couple things that you need to do or a couple things that I want to suggest that you do. Is number one, we get mentally prepared. What does that mean? That means before we go on to our Zoom call to present today, and get ready for the actual presentation, we're gonna have practice. We're gonna be able to go on and actually move around inside the presentation a little bit in case somebody throws something to you that you feel comfortable that you can jump up to the pot buttons and you know where to go. Or if they said something about marketing, you could jump over here and you'd know where to go and so on. So you'd get mentally prepared to actually do your presentation step by step. Now, personally, the way we changed that market share we talked about in 1991 in our company, in our office, is we did that because we met every Saturday morning and we role played and role played and role played until we got it down pat. And in today's world, when we have this time, I'd be doing, if it was me and I still own the Century 21 office today, I'd be having my group come together regularly where we have a role play opportunity where one, one of the individuals in the office does a full presentation for us. And then, you know, the next day somebody else does and the next day somebody else does until we had this down pat. Because if we can get a presentation where we feel comfortable and confident with it, like I said before, there's nothing better than being able to pull up to the table or pull up now to our camera and be able to say that we know that we know that we can't get knocked off our game, that we can go through this whole presentation and impress the customer to make them feel like we have done what we should do is give lots of value. If we show them that we give lots of value at the end of the day, gang, What's gonna happen is they're gonna sign listings with us more often because value is the key. And they also won't fight you on your commission either then because you have presented the right value, you have showed them that you have got the right information and the right values and then value over and above that to work with them and present to them that you are the right agent for them. So that's kind of the overview is what we're getting ready to be mentally prepared, we're ready to move forward. So we're set. And now to go, okay? So now, <clears throat> we obviously are going to get started. So uh, what we would do is we would do sort of similar to what we would do if we were live, is that when we call them onto the screen and we now have got each other on the screen, we're gonna be able to do something that we call small talk smart. And what does that mean? That means we're gonna start to talk about anything except real estate for a couple minutes at least so that they feel comfortable, so their uh, nervousness comes down, because they know that when you start a presentation, there's something that is your goal and your plan. It's your goal and your plan to get a signature at the end of this, and uh, they might not be ready for that. So uh, they also want, you also wanna be able to present to them that it is okay. So we're gonna small talk smart, talk about anything except real estate until they tell us it's time to kick into gear. And that might take a minute, might take two minutes, might take five minutes, and that's okay. However long it takes is good. It's just smart business. Because if you just jump right in and jump right into the presentation, you look like a pushy, aggressive salesperson. And there's nothing that people hate more than when they look in your eyes and the only thing they see is dollar signs. So don't be that realtor. Be patient, take your time, and you'll be fine. Now, we're gonna start as if the, that part is already done. Now we're ready to get going and actually do the presentation. Needless to say, we uh, have our computers ready, we're up and we're good. And uh, we hopefully have also another little key thing is uh, try to make sure that if you're gonna do your presentation, that you don't have a whole bunch of other people in your house streaming or doing stuff at the same time, because that'll cause you great problems as far as with your ability to actually deliver your actual presentation, because your sound will start cutting out and all kinds of things will go wrong. So just a little tip or hit, uh, hint there as far as uh, the streaming part of it goes. 
Now, let's get going and let's actually talk about the actual presentation as we would go through step by step to help a customer today to feel comfortable and confident that we are the right agent for them. So, first of all, I'd say um, get ready because I know what the next slide is, of course. And I'd start to say, well, thank you very much for having me here today. And if you don't mind, I'd like to show you how I work. As you can see, all the slides are generated and created by myself and Century 21. Your colors are in it and everything. I'm not interested in just taking a listing for the sheer sake of taking a listing. Anybody could do that. Have you heard of the expired listing, Mr. and Mrs. Seller? No, I have not. What is that? Well, the expired listing is a group of people that have two things in common. Number one, they, uh, <clears throat> number one, they actually did not get to get their home sold, and you wouldn't want to end up on that list, would you? No? Okay. And also, when you get to the second part of it would be that we're talking about the um, another real estate agent, the other real estate agent of them did not get to work together as a team, because if they would have, the house would have sold. And you do want to sell your house, don't you? Yes? Okay, great. So then to help that to happen, I've come up with my infallible marketing system. As a matter of fact, it's a five-step process that I'll go through that'll virtually guarantee today that your home will sell. And that's what I'd like to share, or share with you now. Do you mind if I continue? Yes? Okay, great. <clears throat> now we're going to go through the five-step process and we're going to actually uh, touch each bullet. And this is called a polka or a preview of coming attractions. So we're going to touch each bullet, then we're going to come back to that and deliver it as we go forward through into the presentation. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So in the five-step process today, what we're going to do is we're going to understand our concerns. What that means is I'm going to ask you a series of questions. A series of questions such as, when do you want to move? Where do you want to move? How come you want to get there? Fair enough? Okay, great. So then we're going to analyze the property. What that means is we're going to get up, we're going to walk around, have a look at the home, which of course we can't do today as far as walk around goes. But what we're going to do is we're going to get you to take your computer and you're going to be able to go around with us and actually show us with your camera your home and we'll do a tour, you giving me the tour. Now in saying that, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to be the seller and I'm going to be the buyer and you're going to tell me everything that can add value into your home because we're going to have to try to get you as much money out of it as you want. Fair enough. Okay, perfect. Then I'm going to put together or look at our customized marketing plan. Our customized marketing plan that we put together just for you. Now the customized marketing plan is going to cover three different areas. First, we're going to talk about my company. Then we're going to talk about my marketing plan. And then we're going to talk about me as an agent to help you to get your home sold. And you do want to get your home sold, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. Now, price and estimate of net. What we're going to do is we're going to go through price and estimate of net. And at the end of the day, what we want to do is we want to come up with a price that you're happy with, that I'm happy with, and then we'll uh, move forward from there to tell you the net dollars you'll have in your pocket. Because that's what you need to know is how much you got to be able to move forward to buy your new house. Fair enough? Okay, perfect. Then we'll go into forms, details, and timing. The forms are the little things we're going to talk about as far as all the paperwork goes, I'm sorry. We're going to cover off on all the forms and we're going to explain all the forms to you. Why? Because we want to go through all the forms today to make sure that you're comfortable with everything that you actually are going to sign. Because you know and I know in the past, at one time or another, you have signed something that you did not really understand or you had not read. I don't want to have that ever have that happen to you and me. So we'll go through those thoroughly today if that's okay with you. Okay, great. Then details. We're going to cover off on all the little things. Well, just before the possession or sometime during the transaction, there's always a little bump in the road. And I'll be there to catch you when that takes place. Fair enough? Okay, perfect. And then it's the timing. The timing is the amount of time it takes to get your home sold and to also the date to which your property is going to be actually sold and the new date that you're going to buy your new house to make sure that those dates align. Because after thousands of transactions and been in the real estate business for a long, long time, I have never had anybody live on the street yet, and you're definitely not going to be the first one. Fair enough? Okay, perfect. So now we're going to go to a mutual decision. You're okay to work with me, and I'm okay to work with you. How are we doing so far? That's the first major close, gang. <clears throat> That's the first time we've actually went ahead and asked for the business. This is a very important uh, part of our transaction is you're going to see when we go through this uh, presentation, we're going to close three times uh, as a strong close. And ultimately, we're going to do what is called trial close many, many times. If we were looking at each other face to face now, as we would be if we were doing a true presentation, um, what would end up happening is that uh, um, I would be getting you to nod. 
That's the power of a trial close. If I can keep your head nodding or keep you saying yes and keep you engaged, I'm doing my job. Because at the end of the day, if we do a whole bunch of trial closes, they're gonna be easier to get a, a strong yes at the end, which means get a signature, and that's what's so important. So as you notice, when we went through that uh, polka, we asked, is that okay with you? Do you understand that? Uh, fair enough. And all those are trial closes. So now what I'd like to do after the mutual decision, if you don't mind, I'd like to start at the top again and we'd go through, understand your concerns. May I continue? Thank you. Now, <clears throat> I'm not gonna go through all these individual questions, uh, stock questions that are in the presentation today, gang, because at the end of the day, I know that uh, you know what they are and you can see them and you can read and you can cover them off, no, no problem. And you'll know how to ask them and then of course get the answers. The only thing I want to really point out to make sure that everybody sees here is that the questions are gonna get progressively gutsier, meaning a little bit tougher to ask. Why? Because we want to have interaction. The key behind uh, getting questions done is you ask the question and they give us expanded information. So notice they're all open-ended questions or wopens, meaning that when you ask the question, they give us an answer. My dad always said to me, remember when you're selling something or when you're presenting something, you have two ears and one mouth, use them accordingly. So we're supposed to be the one asking the questions. And then of course, the person is replying back to us. This part, when we go through this part right here in the actual presentation, will probably take us 20 minutes, 25 minutes to go through this whole part and could take longer depending on the uh, direction that you go within that part, within the actual presentation itself. So we go through these questions and then we'll go through to the next page, which of course are the little tougher ones and a little more uh, interesting ones. Now, the one that I want to point out that's really important to us, other than the rest are pretty, or two that are uh, important and one that's, uh, that we have to do correctly is this. What's most important to you today? The price, the timing, or the concerns, or the convenience? We have to look at having a pause in between there each time. Is it the price, the timing, or the convenience? Why? Because we want them to have a split second to think about each one of those when we present them. Why? Because whichever one they give the answer to us back on that particular point, it's going to take us in a different direction when we actually are helping them to move forward. Because each one of them gives us a new clue on what we can do and what we need to do to help them to move forward. Now, needless to say, I hope that everybody's seeing that the last question is highlighted. It's highlighted because it's a question that I sincerely hope that you'll have the guts to ask. And in our program, we call this a guts gauge question, which means that it's a tougher uh, question to ask because you might get rejected at this point in time. So what would it take to get your home listed with me today? That's a question that if you have the guts to ask that, you're gonna now find out whether you have any hesitations or stalls or friction at this point within the presentation as you're going along. That's the second major close that we're talking about at this point in time in the whole presentation, whereas you're directly asking for the business. If you ask for the business, gang, you'll get it. If you don't ask for the business at the end of the presentation, you're gonna leave and they're gonna, uh, you're gonna be at, the, at this point, you're gonna say, well, thanks, can we move forward? Well, no, we're gonna just think about it. And you don't know where you went wrong. You don't know what went wrong through the whole presentation because you didn't ask for the business as you went through. So make sure you remember to ask for the order and ask for the business. Now, at this point in time, you're gonna, one of two things is gonna happen. You're gonna end up, whereas they're gonna say to you that uh, everything's good, we're happy, continue on. And of course, that's what you're hoping for. The second thing that's gonna happen is they're gonna say, well, you know, I'm a little concerned. And so I have some concerns. And they're gonna give you something that comes up now that you're gonna to need to handle. Maybe it is that they're gonna interview another agent. Maybe it is that they want to, as I said before, uh, maybe they want to fix it up before they sell or anything, whatever it is. When that happens, what I want you to do is say, no problem, and then you go through the dialogue that we'll teach, which is you probably have no reason, uh, probably have a reason for feeling that way. Do you mind if I ask you what it is? And then continue on through. Now, in saying that, why we're, we're gonna do that is we're gonna make sure that we find out all of the hesitations or stalls at this point in time, not get short change and just say, they throw out one of them, we think we've got it all, and then sure enough, they have two or three more that we have to deal with. So we're gonna ask a simple question. Is anything else? 
Is there anything else? Is there anything else that's actually standing in your way from moving forward today? And they're gonna be able to then go ahead and give you the answers. You will know the true answer to this question when somebody finally says to you, that's it, meaning the client, the seller. When the seller says that's it, you'll know, good, you've got all the answers. That's a simple FBI closing technique if you ever wanna look it up, it's very interesting. So when you hear that's it, you know you've got your list now. Could be one thing, could be five things, doesn't matter. You have your list. At this point in time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something that's called the set it aside technique. And what that means is, is we're gonna set this all aside to deal with it later. Because some of these objections or hesitations might get dealt with as we move forward in the presentation from here on in. So you're gonna to say to the seller, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, if you don't mind, what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to set these aside for a minute and then we'll carry on through the presentation and we'll bring them up again later if we need to. Fair enough? Okay, great. And off you go. So you have them written down obviously on your talking pad and you know or your notepad and you know exactly what they are and everybody's clear. Now you're gonna move forward in the presentation because some of these hesitations or stalls are gonna get answered when you continue on through the rest of the presentation. So now we're gonna analyze the property. As I said, this is when they're gonna actually pick up their computer and walk around the house and give you an, uh, an evaluation, give you or everything that they know about the property to help you to be more comfortable as far as that goes. If they obviously are on your computer with you and being able to go through the presentation, they can chances are walk around with it. Hopefully that's a laptop that they're gonna actually present uh, to you with. And I would have suggested that on the way in that they do it on a laptop if at all possible. So again, go all the way through. Now this is your time to ask lots of questions. This is your time to have fun with them. And this is your time to actually interact with them. So as an example, when you're going through, if you see something that's interesting in a rumpus room or see something, a nice painting on a wall or something, ask questions about it, expand on it so that they can interact with you. And the whole idea behind this is, is you're doing what we call stacking or building value with them. You're showing them that they care. Some, uh, a statement that uh, Floyd came up with many years ago is um, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. And I think that's really powerful and important for you to realize that if we present that way, then we're going to get them on side quicker. So we go all the way through the property. Finally, we're done. We went through the property. We're going to come back to the kitchen table. And when we sit back down at there at their kitchen table and you're where you're at, then you're going to be able to go through and start to present again. But when you do that, just before you get going again, pay them a compliment on something that you've seen just to get them back into the mood again, as far as to move forward with the presentation and to uh, make them realize that you have paid attention to everything that they talked about. And then again, you built a little more rapport at that point in time. So moving on. <clears throat> now we're going to talk about our three areas that we touched on, which is called our company, our marketing plan and me. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time in each one of these areas today because of our time restraint, but I am going to touch on each thing to give you a quick idea. So at this point, I'd say, well, today, right now, if you don't mind, I'd like to go through my customized marketing plan. There's three areas I'd like to cover off on. First thing I'd like to talk about is my company, then my marketing plan, and last but not least would be me. Fair enough. Do you mind if I continue? Okay, perfect. So now we're going to talk about my company. Now, these are the five bullets that Century 21 and myself decided to have in there today for you as your stock bullets. Now, you obviously can change and adjust these to match your local company and your local office in your community. Um, but for what's there today, they all work very well. So you would not have to change anything if you didn't want to. Now, when you went ahead to present this and build this in yourself, you'd build another slide that would be right next to this one that would be brand prom or brand recognition. That then it would describe or talk a little bit about brand recognition. And then your next slide, of course, would be um, the next bullet, next bullet, next bullet, all the way down for all everything that's there so that you'd have a slide for each one so you'd be able to cover off on it. But again, you would do what is called a polka and you would just do a quick introduction to all five of the points that are here and be able to say, these are the things that we feel really important to us today to do with our company to help sell your home. Fair enough? Okay, great. And then you would jump into brand recognition would be the next slide. Now, exactly the same thing when we come to our marketing plan. Our marketing plan, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do each bullet again all the way through, describe, talk about it, uh, demonstrate it quickly as the polka, and then of course the next slide you'd have it would be cover off on um, whatever bullet you put there is your next slide. 
Now, what we have done though, is we put in a bunch of um, um, static slides that are here that you can use if you want, or you can still change or adjust it to whatever you feel more comfortable with because it's very easy to do. If you can upload a picture onto Facebook, you can change any one of these slides. It's very, very simple. So we'll just run through very quickly. As you can see, it's all still centrally branded as we go through. So your marketing plan, what would that be if you were gonna go through here and now you jump in and explain everything that you personally do as far as your marketing plan goes. Now, your online, uh, um, as far as what you're doing online goes, what is that, uh, your plan, what are you doing? <clears throat> your mobile here, this is something that I put a little bit of effort into and make sure that I would keep this slide. And here's why is because you wanna to talk to them now about how you're gonna communicate with them, what's best? How are you gonna uh, handle all communications with them? Are you okay with texting? Are you okay with emailing? Would you be like phoning or, or what's best for this particular customer? So that everybody's on the same page so you understand how you're gonna do that. And now at this slide also though, because you wanna stay in control, you're gonna uh, please demonstrate to them or explain to them that if we have anything that's serious that needs to be done or anything serious that we need to talk about, we're gonna to put together another Zoom call, whereas we can meet face to face uh, like we are today and be able to talk to them and go over this with them so they feel comfortable and confident um, on what we're gonna go through. Why do we wanna do that? Because we know as salespeople that if we're looking at somebody in the eye, we know whether they're telling us the truth or not, not the people lie, but at the end of the day, we wanna make sure that we're very comfortable and confident that everybody's moving in the right direction and everybody's on the same page. So, good way to do it. Next. Now, as far as professional photography and so on, what is it that you offer and what do you personally do today? These are, of course, just what do you do? You're gonna put them in or you're gonna take them out, so whatever you personally offer from here. Um, professional measurement companies, if you have it in your community, yes or no, right? Uh, staging, staging something that you're gonna expand on a little bit probably, whether you do it or you don't do it, or whether it's available in your community or you don't, but it is interesting to show the positives and the negatives as far as staging goes, um, as far as that goes. Now, um, also as far as your professional flyers that you're putting out and the in information that you're putting out, uh, please make sure that we're showing them that we have very professional materials all done up in the Cinch 21 colors and so on. So we're ready to go and you'll have some of those in the, uh, that you'll be able to demonstrate and give to them as far as so that they could send it out if they wanna send it out to somebody through their social media hypothetically, or maybe they have some friends or family that you could send it out to that they could share it with. But there's, we have to start thinking of different ways to share this material than just have it in the house because maybe we're not showing the house in your community. Now, video of course is so important today, right? Um, and how you're gonna get the video and how you're gonna deal with it. Of course, everybody's gonna deal with that slightly different on your belief on how you're handling this situation right now um, with the COVID situation and you'll decide on how you're gonna do that. Now, what is your marketing plan as far as online goes? This is where we're gonna spend some time now because at the end of the day, your marketing today is very strong on online. If you're not having a strong online marketing program, you got some trouble out there today because where else are you gonna market? What else are you gonna do? It's a little bit different than it was hypothetically two months ago. Now, open houses, we know there's many people that are doing virtual open houses today and it's working and it's being successful. I seen a post, a Facebook post this morning, as a matter of fact, from one of my past students that did a virtual open house and sold it at the virtual open house. So I hope that that is something that you are looking at and you're interested in and uh, willing to actually go ahead and uh, tackle that and uh, use it as part of your marketing plan. Now, when you go into why me, same thing, all five bullets, go through each one quickly, then you jump into the first one that is the first one that's on the list, of course, number of years of experience and why that's important to me, and so on and so on and so on, um, as far as you go through. Now, at the end of the day, we're gonna be sure that this is really the slide that we jump into, or this is the, really the section they jump into, why? because here's the point, gang. If they don't like you, chances are they're not gonna do business with you. So you wanna make sure that you've got this really up to snuff and make sure that you really know why you're presenting for you. And if you do that, better chance you're gonna get some listings. So I hope that you're, uh, you're happy with what you're seeing so far. So if you wanna make a comment right now, maybe put something into uh, as a comment very quickly as why somebody should work with you, just for fun. Why should somebody work with you? I'll be interesting to see the comments um, at the end of the presentation. I hope you have some ideas of why somebody should work with you. 
if we did a, a course, which we could, and obviously we will down the road, is that we would put a lot of time into these three things now, gang. We would go through as far as our company and our marketing plan and you, and we would really put a lot of emphasis into finding out what do you feel is most important for you in all three of those areas. Because it's really important for us to know our brand and know our company. And when I go all across the country training, since 21 people know their brands better than anybody else. And I'm very proud of that when I see that when we're in an office or we're doing a presentation, whereas they can actually rattle off a lot of positives to why they work for their company. And I say kudos to you guys for that. Now, this is gonna be the third and last time that we're gonna close for the business or ask for the business today, gang. So what we're looking at here is this is a, a slide that triggers us to ask this question. Assuming you're okay with my company, my marketing plan and me, and we could agree on price, would you be willing to list with me today? So what does that mean? That means that we're making sure that they're okay with us. They're okay with our company. They're okay with our marketing plan. Because if they're okay with all three of those things, he should be willing to go ahead and give us the business at this point. But this is also where, if we remember back when we asked that tough, tough question, um, what would it take to get you to list your home with me today? Those points might come up again now. They might not, but they might. Or new ones might come up now. And that's okay. Same thing. Now you're ready to handle those hesitations or stalls. Now you're going to get ready to knock those hesitations or stalls off the shelf by the power of your hot buttons. Now, when they give them to you, of course, you're going to write them down on your talking pad. And then you're going to start to deliver and handle and go through each one by jumping over here to the hot button section. Whereas you said, if they wanted to wait hypothetically, that you would go into the timing analysis and explain to them that the dates and so on and so on and so on as to what it is. If they said it wasn't gonna cost them any money to wait, then we would of course go into financial analysis and explain to them, well, how it could cost them money if they actually decided to wait right now. You know, if they wanted to interview another agent, you said, well, as we already showed you, you'd go through the comparative shopping analysis. Or if they said they wanted to have a lesser commission, you would be able to go through and explain to them, well, here's all the services we offer. And if you wanted to have a lesser commission, which of these services do you not want in your marketing plan today? And of course, they'll say, we want them all. And you'll say, well, you want the last one, don't you? That would be me, right? Yes. Okay. So if you want that, you have to pay the commission that I charge. Fair enough. Any other questions? And you move on from there. So I'm not going to continue on through all these hot buttons. I'll just throw the last one in just for fun. If somebody said they wanted to sell it themselves, you go to this particular hot button, which is a fantastic slide, which is all about the owner of forsalebyowner.com. And this is a powerhouse slide. If you ever have somebody that actually goes ahead and says they want to interview or do it on their own, this says, well, you're going to try to do it like the owner of forsalebyowner.com did, but here's what happened to him. Is he actually listed his house, ended up with paying the commission and making an extra $150,000 net in his pocket more, than he would have made selling it himself because he couldn't sell it himself at that price. So what do you think? Does it make sense for you to have the power of all of the agents in your neighborhood and your location to help to move this forward? Or do you want to try the same as the owner of forsaleowner.com did? I leave it up to you. Good close, good way to get away from somebody saying they want to do it themselves. Now notice here, gang, we're going to jump right back to where we were in the presentation because as a good presenter, you're going, to know, you're going to remember where you left off so that when you go on a tangent to wherever you go in that presentation, you can very quickly go back to where you were. As those of us that are familiar with PowerPoint, you couldn't do that. You would have to shut it down, move it over, go all the way down to that slide, click on that one, and it's a headache to jump around inside, inside PowerPoint. This way, it's very smooth and easy for you to move around and look like a pro, and that's the whole idea behind a, uh, having a professional presentation. Now, let's jump into price. So now, what I'd like to do now, if you don't mind, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, is I'd like to go through a fair price and estimate and net. Let me explain to you how that works, if you don't mind. Well, there's three areas I'd like to touch off on. And first of all, we're talking about wholesale. Wholesale is the price that we're looking at today to be able to find out if you would sell it at that. What that means is probably 75 to 85% of the retail value. Would you consider to sell it for that? You know, of course, 99.9% .9 of the time, they're going to say no to that. But once in a while, you'll get surprised and they'll say yes, because they want their money quickly because they're going to invest it somewhere else and they'll make a bunch of money because they did that. And that's okay that they wanted to sell it wholesale. And if they did, 
you're going to bring out an offer to purchase if you can do it in your community and buy the house because that's what you should do buy real estate we're in the real estate business now we go to retail retail is an arm's length transaction where a buyer and a seller come together and they come to an agreed price you'd be okay with that fair enough yes okay and then we talk about your price well we haven't come to your price yet but we'll do that in a minute fair enough okay perfect so let's have a look at the price triangle and how this works for us today when we look at the price triangle today i can guarantee you if you give me enough time i can get you hundred percent of the value so enough time means this is it hypothetically average days on market in your area is 60 days and they give us uh they give us 180 day listing contract no problem we've got enough time to be able to probably do everything we need to do to get this job done but if that's reversed and hypothetically average days on the market is 180 days and they only give us 60 days to get the job done there's only one thing that's going to have to happen there it's just like anything else if you have to sell it fast you have to adjust the price so then we're going to ask them to say well mr and mrs seller now we've been shortchanged on time here so let me ask you this are you interested in do you think you're going to we're going to be able to get 98 percent 99 percent 97 percent of the true market value now because of the fact that we didn't give ourselves enough time please tell me your thoughts and then you go into it from there now after this we're going to go ahead and we're actually going to go through and demonstrate a powerhouse way to actually deliver price and if you want to learn how to deliver price in a way that guaranteed will get your price like 98 percent of the time uh, jump onto that webinar after that we're talking about and I'll go through that with you and I'll show you how to get your price almost every time in a presentation uh, that's very simple and straightforward, but it works very, very well. Now, we're going to talk, as we said, about the forms, the details, and timing. At this point in time, we'd go through all the forms and we'd actually explain them to them, blank forms, of course. Sometimes people have them laminated so that they can actually share them and write on them or make notes on them and so on like that. It's a good idea. But one way or the other, you're going to share those forms. Now, today, you're going to be able to share them because you're going to put them on the computer and you're going to actually go ahead and deliver them back and forth by sharing them because you have it all ready and set up that you can do that. And you'd actually go through the forms and demonstrate and explain what they are and so that they feel comfortable and confident on what they're signing. Then you're going to talk about the details as you remember those are the little things that we're going to make sure that we're going to look after today fair enough okay good and then the timing we're going to make sure that we have enough time and you've done that you've told us that you're okay with that you've given us enough time so that's not going to be a problem so we'll make sure that when your house sells and the new one you buy that date matches and we're looking after you and you're moving when you want to move fair enough okay that's what i'm going to do that's my job and i'll look after that so together i believe we can achieve more and if you're okay with it i'm okay with it are you ready to get the ball rolling and get your home on the market today mr and mrs seller and from there we would go ahead and we would say thank you very much we would wrap up as if we were done and we would get ready to send the customer the actual document on whatever platform you use docusign or whichever one it is and you're looking forward now to actually getting a signature and wrapping up for our day so that's pretty well it gang as far as the presentation goes of course it's longer than that in the real life presentation because you're going through each one of those uh, uh my company my marketing plan and me but i just wanted to give you a quick abbreviation on how it all works the functionality of what we have here as far as a presentation goes and how easy it works and how easy it is for you to be able to go ahead and do a listing presentation now over and above that though i also wanted to point out to you very quickly that in when you do do your presentations who are in these presentations you will also get a buyer's present pre-buyer's presentation pre-listing presentation for sale by owner presentation and a buyer's presentation are all part of the package that we have here today that we actually can offer to you today and put forward to uh, use this presentation this presentation gang is offered to you in your back office uh, through century 21 you can just go straight there and purchase it if you want um, and if you want to find out about our added value that we're going to give you today for going forward to actually decide to use and buy these presentations today, then as my wife Debbie has put into the chat already, there's a Zoom number there that you can join in and we're going to have a call right after this call um, where we're going to start at 11 o'clock and we're going to go from there. So I want to wrap it up at that and say thank you very much everybody for giving me the opportunity to be part of your system today. 
And I, if there's any questions, I'll be happy to just share them. Thank you very much as always, Doug. We do have a question. Um, somebody asked, and I think Debbie answered it as well, but maybe others have it. Um, how long does a listening presentation typically take? I know you said this part is 20 minutes-ish. How long should people budget? So, so I always try to schedule a great question. I always try to schedule two hours for a presentation, knowing that we're probably going to get it done in 45 minutes to, uh, you know, 55, 60 minutes, somewhere in that time frame. If you're newer in the business, it's going to take you a little longer. It might take you 90 minutes because you don't go through things quite as quick as somebody that's as polished or a little more experienced or this practice a little bit more. Great to know. Thank you. Um, so again, Doug told you where to find that in the Resource Center and also you can go um, to his webinar at 11 o'clock as well and Debbie will be putting that link in there. As always, you can also search the Google Drive for listing presentations if you are inspired to try something new. Start getting your thoughts all put together in a different way. You can search that on Google Drive as well. Uh, we are just scanning these uh, for any other questions um, that might be relevant today. And I think we answered that. A lot of people are saying, thank you, Doug, useful information that they're taking advantage of now. Thank you for being generous with your time and information. Um, and Terry just said here, a nice refresher. And we hope that everyone is getting refreshed for when things finally get up and running once again. So, Doug, thank you as always for contributing to our webinar series. And everyone else, we just want to remind you that tomorrow David Greenspan will be here talking about building mindshare during a crisis. And we will be back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And we will be taking Good Friday and Easter Monday off. We can have an entire other week lined up for webinars as well next week. So we thank you for joining us as always in this space, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.